truce deal between Israel and Hamas is about to end. Hamas has signaled its willingness to prolong the truce with Israel. Israel says its ground operations will continue after the truce, adding that it still is, however, open to options. The Israeli government spokesperson Elon Levy said that Hamas is aware of Israel's willingness to extend the truce in return for the release of 50 more hostages, while adding that around 184 Israelis are still detained in the Gaza Strip. The campaign to end Hamas and bring our hostages home will resume immediately with the end of the hostage release pause. I'm not going to speculate, obviously, about the exact operational movements of our troops and the continuation of that strategy, but Hamas is on notice. That option for an extension is open. As the deadline of the true steel nears, calls for a permanent true steel grows. Palestinian Authority says Qatar, Egypt, the United States, European Union and Spain are working to extend the four-day true steel. Meanwhile, Iran has called for a permanent ceasefire. Iran's foreign ministry spokesperson says the ceasefire in Gaza will aim to stop Israel's occupation in the territory. Hamas's longtime ally Iran has so far denied any direct involvement in the October 7th Hamas attack against Israel. NATO Secretary General Jen Stoltenberg also called for a halt in the fighting in Gaza. I call for an extension of the pause. This would allow for much needed relief to the people of Gaza and the release of more hostages. The suffering we have seen underlines the need for a lasting political solution. This comes even as Israeli President Isaac Herzog confirmed that he wants a coalition of Israel, the United States and other countries to take charge of Gaza. He said, quote, there must be and will be an international involvement, Palestinian involvement, Israeli involvement, some sort of formation that is effective enough, but also represents the various interests. This is the vision. It has to be an interim process until there will be an exiting where we are all sure that Gaza is not anymore a terror base, end of quote. Israel's IDF has released a video showing 200 trucks entering Gaza. The head of the IDF's aid coordinator said that over 2,000 trucks have entered Gaza so far since the start of the war, transferring water, food, and medical equipment. All right, for more on this, we are being joined by retired Colonel Rich Outson, senior fellow at the Atlantic Council and the Jamestown Foundation. He's joining us live from Washington, D.C., Rich, great to see you again, and thank you so much for joining us. This truce and talks of this truce being extended yesterday, President Biden seemed to be backing it as well, saying that this pact with Hamas and Israel is constructed in a way that the truce could be extended. What are your thoughts on this? Uh, well, it's great to be with you, uh, Susan. The mechanism for extending it is pretty simple, as long as you have hostages on hand. There's 184 by the Israelis' own uh, counting. So obviously they put a very high uh, value on the lives of those hostages and getting them back, uh, Some, if they're not still alive, at least to get the remains back. And so Israel has been willing to extend for a day at a time uh, this initial deal, which covered, you know, I, there were initial reports it was uh, 50 Israelis for 150 Palestinians uh, being held in jails in Israel, and then the numbers have been uh, quoted as a little higher, 100 for 300, something like that. But in theory, you can keep extending this for another 15, 20 days if you release 10 hostages on the uh, Hamas side and the Israelis uh, do 30 or something like that. But in practicality, they're having trouble today with the list of names. Who is acceptable? Uh, would you separate a family if there's a family that would be numbers 9 and 10, but not 11 and 12? So there, there is some haggling going on. Uh, over that. But in theory, this uh, sort of 10 at a time for 30 at a time could, could go on for a couple of weeks and, and the United States would favor that. Israel's president has also spoken about this new mechanism of governments for Gaza. It could include Israel, the United States and other countries as well. Is that a realistic vision for Gaza? 
Well, it's interesting that it's not too different from what has been proposed uh, for the West Bank. For instance, in the West Bank, you have a split control uh, between this is under the Oslo, the old Oslo Accords, where you have what are called areas A, B and C with the A areas under direct Palestinian security and administrative control. B mixed where the Israelis control security, but uh, administration and services through the Palestinians and C more or less under uh, sort of direct Israeli control. I think he has in mind something like that, where you would have a split authority with close international supervision of whichever, if it's the Palestinian Authority that's based in Ramallah or some provisional non-Hamas entity that's doing it. So the precedent exists, but the question is, who are the right international partners? Who's going to be willing to put money and, frankly, troops uh, against these tasks? So it, it's possible in theory, yes. Do you think perhaps maybe some kind of U.N. peacekeeping troop or something like that, where, you know, it's a coalition of international countries, but it's under the umbrella of the United Nations? I think given the role that the U.N. has played in Gaza in terms of providing uh, schools and textbooks and food relief, I think it's a natural thing. Uh, you know, there is a question of trust. Israel's experience with U.N. peacekeeping forces uh, during previous wars and operations, for instance, yeah. UNIFIL, along the Lebanese border has not been pristine. And, and I think they uh, would probably welcome the UN taking charge of the uh, sort of political and administrative side of this. But there's going to have to be a coalition of the willing, if you will, on the security side, some set of uh, interlocutors that are acceptable both to the Palestinians and the Israelis as security partners. I don't think the UN can do that piece. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, thank you so much for that perspective, Rich, and it's always great talking to you. Great to see you as well. Thank you.